Armstrip. I'm a filmmaker, I'm a writer director, and I graduated from Stowe High School in the year 2000. Um, and I write and direct animation, live action, everything. Um, I've worked a lot in the area, and I'm a big fan of Kent, Ohio, in particular, as far as like the kind of aesthetic goes. Um, but I moved to LA in February of last year, so I've been out of town for about a year. I'm in town visiting right now, obviously. But, um, I, I've done a lot of stuff. I've done animation and I've done live action. Um, most recently, I did The Murders of Brandywine Theater, um, my first big live action SAG film back here in Kent, Ohio. Um, it, started some, it started some names from Josh Cribbs, the Dean Bahar, and Diamond Dallas Page, and some other cool names. Um, that's kind of been my main focus, selling that. I, I moved to LA and it's helped a lot, you know, learning how to sell films and stuff like that. Um, and I'm sure I'll be back to do more things like that. Um, I'm sure I'll be back maybe for a sequel or two um, and for some other stuff because I do love filming in Ohio. Um, other things I've done, I've done animated stuff like Batman's Shot in the Face, the short film that, that won some awards online and did pretty well. And I've done, um, I did a short animated horror called The Witch of Deadwood for Stage 5 Productions out in LA. Uh, I did a kind of a clerk's smaller film, a feature film called, a uh, live action, called The Long Slow Death of a 20 something. And I acted in that too. Um, it was kind of like our own low budget, kind of generational being in your 20s thing. And you can see that around town. I think it's in the family videos. So I made an animated, um, I made an animated short called Batman's Gonna Get Shot in the Face. And what it was was we would. We we all sat down and we would do the, we'd film these goofy live action interviews, interviews a bunch of us, and we would speak as though we were like Superman, Wonder Woman, all these characters, everybody but Batman, and we would talk about it like it was a mock documentary. And we would just, I mean, we'd cut him down, rip him to shreds, make him sound like a terrible person, just a terrible person. And I talked to my friend Jake, who was an animator, and he went in and took our voice, oh, I'm sorry about my phone. He went in and took our, um, our voices and animated actual Flash characters in our places instead. Like so, you, so it really is the Justice League and other heroes kind of bad mouth in the sky. It's kind of like I would say that was one of the times where you know I'd always done film stuff, but that was where I was like kind of mixing my sense of humor with our films, which was kind of like a given. I should have done that from the beginning, but it ended. The two things never clicked, oddly enough. But that was a blast, and that did that, that made some uh, made some noise for sure in the nerd communities. Long Slow Death of a 20-something, like I said, it's kind of uh, starred me. It was based not on my life, but on the things we all go through in our 20s. It's 30 creep stuff, and kind of... It was a comedy, too, but it was more grounded in reality, like a clerk's. Even though there were fantasy moments that were kind of in the main character's head, um, it was more just kind of the story of getting older and uh, kind of trying to balance your, your almost boyish innocence or naivete with a harsher world and trying not to, and I sound like such a lifetime original movie when I explain it, but, you know, just trying not to become a, I can't cuss or anything, try not to become a, um, uh, soulless or, or, um, too, too calculating or too, too, um, emotionally conservative as you, as you get older and, and do have to struggle with the real world. For me. Um, and, and I'll say that every 10 years we're doing a sequel to that. So it'll be 20 something, 30 something, 40 something, 50 something. Until, until cancer or something gets me. Really? <laughs> there will be uh, sequels to that always. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody actually dies in it? Yeah, they may. I, I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, 30 something. I've been, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, I, there may be some more realistic things that kind of set in for the characters in their 30s, because they're all going to be 10 years older every time. So yeah, death is, will absolutely play a part of it, you say that for sure. Maybe too much death, actually. Okay. Because that's kind of how it feels. You know? Okay, so I shot The Murders of Brandywine Theater. It was my first time working with the Screen Actors Guild, and I worked with the office from Chicago. You know, I was afraid because I've never worked with unions, and once you do that, you're working... It's not just like a group of kids shooting something in Ohio on their own time. I mean, you, you've got to follow rules, and you've got to pay people a certain amount, and take care of them and feed them and, and, uh, and give them places and you know it was a lot it was, a, it was like kind of putting your big, big, big kind of like putting your big boy pants on uh, for us as filmmakers so it was stressful and crazy um, and it was a, it's about a man a man named Henry Costa who is a ventriloquist and the whole town he lives in a fictional town in Brandywine, called Brandywine which we use tent to shoot and the whole town kind of picks on him walks all over him kind of like uh, Marty McFly's dad in, in Back to the Future and uh, one day, his puppet, Moxie, who's like his only friend, uh, starts to speak up for him, you know, while on Henry's arm. So it's obviously Henry doing the speaking. And uh, he kind of starts to find his courage through this thing. And they, 
it, it kind of snowballs into being more than courage, and you know, it leads to even murders. And, you know, it's a big, ridiculous kind of tongue-in-cheek story, but it was, it was a fun time, and uh, it taught me a lot. It taught me more than anything I've ever done. You know, my goal was always to be able to. Ah, God, it sounds so pretentious. My goal was always to be able to just wake up in the morning, and whatever I thought of in my head, that's what paid my bills for the next year or two, no matter what. So whether it was cart animation, live action, you know, we might do a book, we're talking about doing a, 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 a game, a, a third-party kind of computer game and selling that. Um, they're my friends over there. Uh, you know, my goals were always that, but I think that the longer I do film, the more I do kind of get loftier ambitions as far as film goes. And I, now I'm thinking like, and I really would like a shot at doing something for, you know, a few million dollars budget-wise on a feature film. I think I could handle it. I think I think that may be the only way to actually do certain stories that are in my head that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do with, you know, less money.